Uh, welcome to the news flash from the 25th of September. And we have some interesting topics and news. First of all, I want to start off with a topic about a brand new battery that might be very interesting for smartphones, but also auto uh, mobiles, automobiles, <laughs> cars, so uh, electric vehicles, especially. Uh, and this will be a new battery that is using lithium ion battery but it's using a different kind of um layer in between you know that when you're charging all the little pluses have to go to the minuses and so on so this is a very interesting thing that allows us to charge those batteries those lithium ion batteries much much farther first faster than we did before with a normal graphite layer in between those they're now using a new layer that is called and i have to read it because otherwise i could not tell you molly molybdenum tungsten niobate alloy that they're using for this layer in between the pluses and minuses i'm just like simplifying it over simplifying it here and this will allow to quicker charge your electric vehicle for example or other devices that use a new modern lithium-ion battery with this alloy as this layer so 20 minutes charging your smartphone is nothing really completely new we know already about 120 150 and even 200 watt charging smartphones but it could become the norm with this new technology to also charge your car in 20, 15 to 20 minutes. And this is super, super interesting because this would allow us to yeah, have like a little bit of n more normal kind of um, experience when, when driving to uh, refuel your car, refuel your car because there's no fuel anymore. But usually when you fuel up your car, you take, take about 10 minutes max five minutes if you're quick and uh, having it 15 minutes in this re region would make it very interesting for people who say okay this is just enough time that i uh, would say i can switch to an electric vehicle and not just use my uh, petrol or fuel car uh, just normally so this would be a very revolutionary technology and i'm pretty interested in how this will uh, reduce the short charging times and how good it is and how cheap it is to produce and if it really becomes the norm the standard because there's so many battery technologies that we heard of in the past that never really made it to the market so i'm very very um, happy about it that they're working on something that is basically 99% the same that we had before just a different layer in between so they are exchanging only one little thing and that can improve the speed of charging by a lot so very very interesting technology uh, it was founded by uh, researchers of the department of energy uh, and um, in the u.s state of uh, tennessee university of tennessee in knoxville uh, they uh, found out about this interesting technology so it's very very good that we have uh, people working still on improving our current batteries uh, to make them more reliable make them fast charger make them more dense so they can hold up a little bit more charge very very interesting indeed now let's go back from this battery kind of topic that has something to do more with electric vehicles and on a side note only with smartphones to a real smartphone. A smartphone that you probably never heard of made in Germany. Yes, I'm talking about the Gigaset smartphones and there's a new Gigaset GX6 model coming out here. It's an outdoor smartphone also use a rugged smartphone usually they're a little bit thicker and they you know, can like if you want to um, uh, use it as a hammer to hammer some nails into wood or something like this so they're very very strongly built usually and they introduced their new gx6 smartphone i have to read about the specs but it sounds very interesting it's the um 
GX6 is the successor of the GX290, which which was like the predecessor that um, yeah was I think also like a very rugged phone, but not the quickest, not the fastest phone. People were uh, complaining about the camera also being weak, and I think they addressed lots and lots of those things. And if you're interested in rugged smartphones, there are lots and lots of rugged smartphones. This might be something to look at because it is coming with a MediaTek Dimensity 900 SoC so it's a 5G enabled chip granted it's not the newer 8100 or 9000 uh, high class chip but it's a more of an entry level chip that you can already find in some smartphones in around this 200 to 300 euro price range but still nevertheless it's a good smartphone chip 5G support 120 hertz display though sadly not an AMOLED screen this is usually what you find when you are looking at rugged smartphones they're using still IPS LCDs the cool thing about this smartphone is it is built not only like a tank but it also has a removable battery and this removable battery together with this chipset that's only a Dimensity 900 it's not using so much power it's not so demanding can really really last long 5000 milliampere hour battery removable battery super super interesting just remember you could like put two in there and have like fun for the for the next two weeks or something like this it's a bit smaller than the last phone the gx290 had a 6200 milliampere hours and even weaker chip but the chip was like so weak and also older so it was using a little bit more of this power so it needed really 6200 but this 5000 milliampere hours should last you like really i would say a work day a work week <laughs> not a work day a work week eventually uh, uh, depending on how you're using it um, and you can replace the battery so it's really really cool so and of course also mind-blowing for some people not only replaceable battery but also it is water and dust resistance with this replaceable battery of course you have to close the battery door but otherwise it is uh, or the, the, the back you have to close it up completely otherwise it won't seal everything and also very interesting 30 watt charging so in roughly an hour you can charge the whole battery which is also pretty interesting or at least to 90 percent and uh, yeah then we have also 15 watt wireless charging removable battery wireless charge how is that even po is this allowed <laughs> so interesting here's a photo of this uh, uh smartphone you can see here yeah it looks like almost like a normal smartphone not not just like those normal rugged smartphones that are built a little bit like a tank a little bit thicker um, granted it is a bit thick but still it has all the newest technology that you need wi-fi for, um, uh, 6 nfc gps bluetooth 5.2 such things are built in uh, also galileo of course and glonass and baidu as um, uh, alternatives for gps and it has a three and a half millimeter headphone jack as well is it my dream phone I'm, I'm not sure right now but yeah 128 gigabytes internal space only ufs 2.1 but yeah this is usually what you get with the rugged phones they're not like high class high um, flagship like phones and uh, you can however the internal memory 128 gigabytes expand via micro sd card which is pretty interesting and you have a triple slot for two sim cards additionally to the micro sd card so take this back off and put those two sims in and a micro sd card very very cool indeed the display is an ips display 6.6 .6, uh, inches 120 hertz refresh rate and uh, roughly full hd plus so it's a stretched 2412 by 1080p screen it can get pretty bright but the maximum brightness is not really really good so 550 nits uh, per square meter which is like or candle per square meter it's okay i would say for outdoors visibility 600 650 680 would be better but yeah it's okay interestingly enough they heard they listened to what people had to say about the camera system and now they include 
a flagship camera processor. I'm not sure which one it is, but it has a 1 over 1.5 inch uh, size sensor inside. So it could be a Samsung or a Sony sensor uh, with 50 megapixels and OIS. So it should provide you good quality in terms of photography but usually those phones ship only with one real camera sensor they have a second one in there but it's a two meg megapixel macro lens so not very useful in my opinion and the front-facing camera is i think a little bit better 60 megapixels so should be should be enough for recording also 4k videos actually but i'm not sure if it's possible here so overall this might be a good alternative for a samsung galaxy x cover 6 pro that is also available in the same like price region but a bit more expensive because i think it costs 609 euros and this gigaset gx6 cost around 580 euros still a very high price for the dimensity chip but you have to keep in mind that it's not everything the removable battery you get the back cover the micro sd slot the possibility for three and a half millimeter headphone jack and and this is i think what costs also a little bit more five years of android security updates so yeah, this is a device that you can use for five years because they are updating it. They only will provide you two major Android upgrades, but five years of security upgrades. So pretty interesting, I would say still. So I'm not sure if I will get one. Maybe Giga said, if you're listening, I'm very interested in getting it. It should be coming out end of September um, this year. So yeah, might be very interesting to try it out there. I think a few colors um, first of all it will come out only in the titanium gray version and then later on in october there will be coming the titanium black version out there as well so very interesting device and probably you will you never heard about gigaset before at least not when you're not coming from germany so Otherwise, uh, these are the news now. Of course, there are other things going on. iPhone 14 uh, tests and iPhone 14 Pro tests. And there are now the new AirPods Pro 2 out. So lots and lots of Apple stuff going on. Uh, you heard about my uh, Mate 50 Pro sadly being cancelled. I'm like, ah, why couldn't have they told me earlier? Because I was like refreshing AliExpress until I found it. And I was like, Oh, I want orange and yeah it's available click 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 bye 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 and then almost a month later they say huh you're living in Germany yeah you ordered from us uh, we cannot send it to you because it's too far away and import taxes and so on how about you cancel your order we can otherwise not ship it we cannot fulfill it and I was like where do I get an orange Mate 50 Pro? I don't get one anywhere. It's sold out completely. It's sold out in Japan. The, and in Japan, <laughs> in Japan, in China, it is sold out completely, uh, the Mate 50 Pro. So where do I get one? I have to wait probably for the launch. That should happen tomorrow, the 26th of in, uh, September it should happen in Germany together with the Nova 10. I'm not sure if the Nova 10 Pro is in the making as well or only the Nova 10 is coming out in Germany but they are also announcing the Mate 50 Pro eventually here for Germany but sadly then probably not with Harmony OS 3 but rather with Emotion UI 30. I will keep you updated on this if I know anything and probably will come back to it then next week eventually. Uh, when I know a little bit more about also prices, which is pretty interesting because I could imagine this being like 1,200 euros again and then it would be very, very hard to sell here, especially with, without Google services. And we have the issue already with the Nova 10 where I think it is a little bit overpriced, at least what they announced on at, at IFA. Anyway, uh, talking about smartphones and uh, my videos that I will uh, release uh, shortly, uh, taking a look at my list that I see here. Um, and by the way, I'm recording again 11 o'clock or something like this. Another birthday today. Um, and yeah, the day was a little bit long. This is why I'm like having struggle talking apparently because I'm like a bit of tired. Anyway, still doing this video. There is a headphone review coming out. Um, KZ or KZ, I think this is how Americans pronounce it. I'm not sure how they want to pronounce it. It's an abbreviation for, I don't know anymore, but they send me a nice uh, pair of headphones 
and uh, I'm testing the, those. I actually have them here if you're interested in them. And this is how they look like and probably your experts know a bit about those already. And they have left and right written on it, which I, I was so blind. I was like searching, where's the left and right indicator? It's literally written here and you will see it in the video that I yeah messed it up in the video as well because I didn't find them until recently. I like, ah, oh, so obvious. Anyway, um, there's a task coming for, for, for those um, pretty uh, affordable uh, bunch of headphones. So I can recommend uh, looking at them, uh, taking a look at them, especially if you like this uh, typical V-shaped kind of sound. Uh, the next will be hardware versus software gimbal. A nice little video that I did a few minutes just came to my mind, just a four minute video where I test out the... Uh, Zenfone 9 that has like a hardware gimbal built in here against a software gimbal that is now sitting there in my shelf back there. You have to just believe me. The LG Wing, which has a software gimbal built in. And I think the software gimbal did a little bit more and work a little bit more like a classical gimbal where this is just like a, you know, I don't want to say gimmick, but a hardware gimmick for better OIS to have a gimmick, uh, to have a, a gimbal here, but you cannot control the gimbal like I want to now go up left or something like this, which you can do on the LG Wing with software. So I'm doing a comparison, barely uh, mentioning the software features, just focusing on the stabilization, which one is better, this one or the LG Wing. And the next one will be, what will be the next one? Uh, of course, the major comparison, the Zenfone 9 versus the Xperia 5 Mark IV. Which one is the better device? Which one I can recommend for a compact flagship device? So if you're interested in this, um, there will be a video coming out as well. I did already the camera reviews. Now it's all about the devices itself and if the devices can be uh, used and how they are, can be used and which one I would recommend to you, which one I think is better. Spoiler alert, there's no completely real winner, but I have um, a favorite. Anyway, uh, some other videos will, will be coming out. Uh, if you missed it, I did a Xiaomi 12S Ultra like a vibrant against like a authentic video. And I also did in link is in the description of this video. Not this video, but the Leica Vibrant versus Authentic video. There's also a night video, a video and a photo comparison there, short one, uh, where you can also take a look at uh, how they perform at night. Spoiler alert, I think it is very clear that the Leica Vibrant one is the one that most people prefer. There's some people preferring the authentic version and then you can edit in post, but most of the people I heard of are preferring the uh, other version. Uh, what else is coming out? Uh, I think these are all the videos that I have prepared right now. There are of course some other videos coming out that I did not do yet, but I still have on my to-do list the Xperia 5 Mark IV against the 1 Mark IV, especially the uh, zoom lenses here on both are pretty interesting for some people. So of course I will do some more videos about this one here. Uh, this guy here, the Magic 4 Ultimate, will I will do some vid one, especially one very interesting video, how you can edit the footage here to look a little bit more like a Sony, more natural kind of color, um, and how you can do it on the phone itself using KineMaster, for example, which might be very interesting for some people. And uh, yeah, then some other things will definitely come uh, as well. Some other comparisons with this one here and maybe the 5 Mark II that I also have somewhere. And um, yeah, maybe some other uh, interesting videos will come out of just looking at other stuff here that might come out. We will see. Uh, be surprised. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm also, I will surprise myself probably with another video. So this is basically everything for the newsflash of uh, the 25th of uh, September 2022. I um, hope you have a nice uh, week and until the next time.